Hey, ladies and gents, welcome to my channel. Since Wade Wilson was put on my radar, I've been going down a rabbit hole. Last night, I was doing some research and learned about Wade's criminal activities while he's been incarcerated in Lee County Jail. You'd think, because he's in jail, that his criminal career will have come to an end. Yet Wade has continued to get in trouble for him behind bars. According to court records, Wade has been involved in an escape attempt and drug bust with some chick named Bonnie. Girl, leave Bonnie and Clyde in the storybooks and movies. Ma'am, just why? Anyway, I pulled the arrest report, and here's what happened. On April 20th, 2023, at approximately 6 o'clock a.m., Corrections K-9 Deputy Jose Chimelis deployed K-9 Kylo to conduct a free air sniff of the outside receiving area located at the main jail due to information that narcotics were placed there. K-9 Kylo gave a positive alert at the southeast corner of the outside receiving area where landscaping rocks are laid, K-9. Kylo began digging into rocks and landscaping mesh. A gray grocery bag was recovered, which had two Ziploc bags inside. Each Ziploc bag contained loose cigarettes, suspected narcotics blue baggie with crystal substance lighters and alprazolam pills. The suspected narcotics both field test positive for methamphetamine. In total, 59 cigarettes, 4 alprazolam pills, 4 lighters, and 18.77 grams TPW of meth were recovered. Detective Frangi, Lee County Sheriff's Office Narcotics Unit, was contacted and assumed the investigation. Detective Frangie spoke with Lieutenant Anderson and the following members of Shakedown Team, K-9 Deputy Kimales, Deputy Hissam, and K-9 Deputy Smick. They provided the following synopsis. The Shakedown Team was alerted by an inmate trustee who wished to remain anonymous that narcotics were being brought into the faculty by inmate trustee Bobby Hitchman utilizing the outside receiving area of the jail. Hitchman was coordinating with a person on the outside believed to be Lynette Acosta so narcotic drops could be made. Hitchman is then providing the narcotics inmate trustee, Daniel Mulcahy. Mulcahy distributes the narcotics to Wade Wilson and Edmilson Martins. Martins is believed to be in a relationship with Acosta. The shakedown team began reviewing Wilson's jail phone calls, which revealed he was speaking to a person on the outside name, Bonnie Wiggins, about narcotics. Due to the suspected drops being made, the shakedown team has proactively reviewed phone calls and emails to and from inmates. ESU was contacted and cameras were placed in the receiving area. On April 19th, 2023, phone call were made between Wilson and Bonnie. The verbiage was not direct, but implied a narcotic transition would take place. A camera positioned on the courthouse facing the outside receiving area captured footage of an unknown vehicle parking at the bus stop at approximately 2.25 a.m. on April 20th, 2023. An unknown person is then seen running into the receiving area where the narcotics were located. Investigation continued on April 20th, 2023. Detective Frangie was reviewing jail calls. A call was placed by Wilson to Bonnie at 4.16 p.m. Wilson was agitated with Bonnie and was talking about where the package was left. At 3.30 minute mark, Wade mentions that it was the last night to attempt because nothing was going to happen Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. A handwritten note was located by corrections deputies in the laundry room. The note read, was good. Dude red fell off, so I had two use the hose to handle up. It's there, cool. It's not at the pole, bro. The bitch put it in the corner by the pole under the rocks, and it's covered a little bit by the black tarp that's covering rocks. Next time, I will get it right by the pole again. There's an ounce of icy four packs, four lighters. Gotcha, bro. The note believes to be written by Wilson and has been submitted to evidence. Detective Frangie located the following messages between Mulcahy and Bonnie. On April 20th, 2023, at 12.01 p.m., Daniel Mulcahy message. Bonnie no, went out to dinner last night, but nothing was there good to eat. At 1.12 p.m., Bonnie replies in the corner where it was first under rocks and black tarp. Surveillance footage was obtained from LCSO court operations. The video was from a camera posted on the courthouse building facing the southeast direction. On April 20th, 
2023 at approximately 225 a.m., a vehicle pulls up in front of gate to the receiving area. An unknown person exits the vehicle and sprints towards where the package was located. The person then sprints back to the vehicle and it drives away on MLK Boulevard eastbound. The vehicle appeared to be dark colored SUV. While reviewing jail mail, Detective Frangel located a previous photo sent by Bond to Wilson of a dark blue Audi SUV parked in a driveway. The photo was taken from the front of the vehicle. Analytics were conducted revealing the vehicle was a blue 2015 Audi FL tag registered to Rhonda Hartwig. The vehicle is registered to Bonnie Address, Fort Myers, Florida. The audit hit West Bond, Pine Island, and Pondella Road LPR at approximately 2.45 a.m., 20 minutes after the drop. The audit has similar characteristics to the vehicle that made the drop, specifically lighter colors, side view mirrors, tail light size, positioning, and rear red reflectors. On April 26, 2023, Detective Frangel reviewed phone calls that transpired that day. Wilson utilized another inmate's phone pin code, Robert Hudson, and called Bonnie, attempting to throw off any monitoring of his phone calls. The synopsis of those phone calls was Wilson speaking about previously selling Suboxone strips in the jail and Bonnie providing more to him in the future. Wilson goes on to ask Bonnie to message Hitchman to open lines of communication for future drops. Noted messages. April the 26th, 23, Lynette Acosta and Bobby Hitchman. April 26th, 23, Lynette Acosta messages. Hitchman, yo, what's up? What's going on? Reference message 158,282.065, April the 26th, 23. Hitchman messages, Acosta, man, this shit. So, man, you wouldn't believe it. Have you talked to Red? They strip, search me naked, SMH shit. Real, but what's up with you? Reference message 158,286,411, April the 26th, 23. Acosta message. Hitchman, nah, I have not. I'm a try calling today. Take it easy, bro. Reference message 158,286,693-426-223. Hitchman messages, Acosta, stay in touch, fam. We just got to be patients. Big broth, aim, always working. 100% ion, lay down like, whoa, L-O-L-F-W-M. Reference, message 158,292,159. April the 27, 23. Bonnie and Hitchman, April 27, 23. Bonnie messages. Hitchman on behalf of Wilson, stating it was, wait, what are we doing? I'm still out there. Hitchman responds and states he checked and didn't see anything. Hitchman says to be more careful. Reference 158,325,935, April the 27th, 23. Hitchman messages Bonnie and states, eight, when can you do something? And what happened to the last one? In, like this texting shit. So we're going to have to talk on the phone, 100% reference, number 158-406,442, April 27, 23. Bonnie messages. Hitchman Saturday night can make it happen. 100% reference message, 158,416,438, April 27, 23, Hitchman messages. Bonnie and states, yes, so what happened to the last one? Reference, 158,422,563, April 27, 23, Bonnie messages Hitchman. It's right next to normal spot, over just a little bit underneath black sheet reference message, 158,424,789 noted phone calls, April 27, 23, Bonnie and Wilson. Messages, 5.38 a.m., Wilson calls Bonnie from Robert Hudson's phone, minute mark 13, or 38. Wilson asks Bonnie if she talked to someone because he might try deal tomorrow. 613 M. Wilson calls Bonnie from Robert Hudson's phone, minute mark 350. Wilson asks Bonnie to message Hitchman. What are we doing? I'm still out there. 623 AM Wilson calls Bonnie from Robert Hudson's phone. 
minute mark 435. Wilson states that they'll try to call Red later. 9.38 p.m. Wilson calls Bonnie from Robert Hudson's phone. Minute mark 130. Bonnie advises that Red text her. Bonnie voice is very low, making it difficult to understand. Wilson asks Bonnie to text Red and then states he wants her to check jail mail first to see what the other persons are saying. 8.54 p.m. Wilson calls Bonnie from Robert Hudson's phone, minute mark 7.57. Wilson asks Bonnie if she could check his jail mail and if he could call Red a little bit later because Red wanted to talk to him. Minute mark 4.50 Wilson states to make this thing happen Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. The guy we're talking to now is the main guy. He gonna grab the stuff, referring to Hitchman. Wilson states whatever he tells Hitchman is what up. Lehigh Burrell, who's in constant communication with us, he should be good. He's asking about the people on the first floor, referring to Hitchman. Now we have Red on the team. All we have to do is get him there. Wilson asks Bonnie to get Red to make it happen. Wilson then states he can tell the guy right here what day and he can grab it directly form Joe. Bonnie says Saturday. Wilson asks Bonnie to get Red to make it happen. Wilson then states he can tell the guy right here what day and he can grab it directly form Joe. Bone says Saturday. Wilson asks Bonnie to text Hitchman back Saturday night unclear. How are you going to see me though on a Sunday? Wilson then mentions he has to watch his words cause it's hard to talk on the phone. Ultimately, Wilson tells Bonnie to say Saturday night can make it happen 100%. Bonnie then tells Wilson Hitchman responded to her message, so she replies to him. References 563 and 789. Wilson then tells Bonnie to text Red, yep, we got it from last time and we need you. Saturday night. 10.25 p.m. Wilson calls Bonnie from Robert Hudson's phone. Minute mark 9.35. Wilson tells Bonnie we're going to do the thing Jenna is going to get. Bonnie and Wilson say they're going to call her by her name, Kayla. Wilson asks for 10 strips, two packs of the brown, and toe little things. Bonnie then talks about the last order. Wilson tells Bonnie to send a text about the time Saturday and that he's going to be paid. Wilson then asks if everything was cool with the other guy on the jail mail. Wilson then asks Bonnie to add another person to jail mail because the heat was down. Wilson possibly mentions a name and states he needs him because he's his delivery boy and it's important he has him on the team. He's my guy that runs around the jail. Detective Frangie reviewed Bonnie's profile on jail mail, specifically under Connections. On April 27, 2023, Bonnie sent a friend request to Daniel Mulcahy. 10.41 p.m. Wilson calls Bonnie from Robert Hudson's phone. Minute mark 5.30. Wilson tells Bonnie to text Hitchman. It's right next to normal spot over just a little bit. Underneath black sheet reference message 158,424,789. Wilson then asks Bonnie to send a friend request to Daniel Mulcahy and to message him. I'm April 27, 23 Martins, an unknown male. 827 PM Martins calls Lanet's number blank and speaks to Lanet for several minutes from inmate Jihad Ori's pin code. 311906. Lanet stopped talking at the 514 minute mark. Hitchman's below phone call to the unknown male can then be heard. April 27, 23, Hitchman calls Lanet's number blank and speaks to unknown male. Mace states Red texted him last night. The little female that go pick him up, he got her on the kiosk. Hitchman states he has a call with him at 10 p.m. Hitman then states he talked to him before and said his father is locked up with him. Detective Frangie discovered that Del Toro's father, Antonio Del Toro, a white male with a date of birth blank, was in custody. Hitchman asked the male when a good day is. The male stated he didn't know, but stated he can talk to the little female and he'll know what's going on because she will make him deliver. The male stated, get ready this weekend, and that they would have to switch shifts. 
He then states it would be day shift. Hitchman then L the mail about homeboy who was on the news but didn't want to say his name. Detective Frangi discovered Wilson was on the news that day at 6 p.m. Hitchman tells the mail he will check in at the same time tomorrow. April the 27th, 23, Martins and Del Toro, 9.57 p.m. Martins calls Lamette's number blank and speaks to Lanette for several minutes. Form inmate Jihad Oriz, pin number 311906. Martins speaks to Del Toro about the future drop and making money. Martins tells Del Toro he can make $600 a week making drops. Martins tell him he is going to text him this weekend. Noted phone calls, April 28, 23, Bonnie and Wilson. 12.25 p.m. Wilson calls Bonnie from Robert Hudson's phone. Minute mark 9, 57. Bonnie discusses jail mail from Hitchman where he references a care package. Reference message, 158,436,802. 10 minute mark. Bonnie says Red will be on the call. Red is then placed on the call with them. 13, 10 p.m. Wilson calls Bonnie from Robert Hudson's phone. Bonnie confirms that Red is good for Saturday. Wilson tells Bonnie to message the other guy and say they're good for Saturday. Bonnie then sends a message to Hitchman stating, okay, cool, have mom send that care pack. Saturday night reference, 158,462,185 narcotics. Operation April the 29th, 23. Due to the investigation, Detective Frangi believed a narcotics drop was going to be conducted on Saturday, April the 29th, 2023. Detective Frangi plans an operation to intercept the narcotics drop the night. On April 29th, 2023, members of the Lee County Sheriff's Office Narcotics had multiple UC detectives watching the receiving area of the jail. UC detectives also conducted surveillance on Wiggins' home address, blank. At approximately 9.09 p.m., Bonnie entered the blue 2015 Audi with an unknown male, later identified as Devlin DeWitt. The vehicle traveled, stopped at Firehouse Subs, 1519 NE Pine Island Road, and then traveled to the racetrack located at 16900 North Cleveland Avenue, North Fort Myers. While at the racetrack, two other people approached the Wiggins and DeWitt. The other two persons were identified as Antonio Del Toro and Tamara Paul. The four individuals stayed at the racetrack for approximately three hours. At approximately 11.45 p.m., the individual entered the Blue Audi and departed to 2115 Mel K Boulevard, Fort Myers. The vehicle drove past the receiving area and made circles in the area. The vehicle returned back to 2115 MLK Boulevard, Fort Myers, and stopped in front of the receiving area. While under surveillance, the passenger, Antonio Del Toro, exited the vehicle and jumped over the gate arm. Del Toro then ran into the receiving area to the rear of the trash compactor. Once Del Toro exited the vehicle, the driver, DeWitt, circled the area and then returned several minutes later and picked up Del Toro. The vehicle then traveled north onto the business US-41 bridge while detectives continued surveillance on it. The tactical narcotics unit eventually caught up to the vehicle, stopping it at the racetrack located at 16900 Ntemiami Miami Trial. All suspects were removed from the vehicle and secured. TNT K-9, Detective Sin deployed his K-9 Atlas and conducted a free air sniff of the vehicle. K-9 Atlas had a positive alert on the vehicle. Due to the positive alert on the vehicle, due to the positive alert, a vehicle search was conducted. TNT Detective Ocasio located 1.2 grams TPW of methamphetamine inside of Del Toro's green book bag. Dekta Vascasio also located 9 grams TPW of fentanyl, 9.2 grams TPW of methamphetamine, and 11 strips of buprenorphine and naloxone sublingual film. 8 milligrams, 2 milligrams in gray bags. Those items were found in gray bags on the front passenger floorboard and under the front passenger seat where Wiggins was sitting. 
Detective Ocasio located 0.58 grams TPW of fentanyl and 0.28 grams TPW of methamphetamine in Paul's zebra purse. It was discovered that DeWitt was driving on a suspended license. Narcotics Detective Cologne witnessed Del Toro make the drop. Once the scene was clear, scene was clear of the suspects. The narcotics drop was located behind the trash compactor. There were two packages made of plastic shopping bags with tape on the outside. The packages included 8.85 grams TPW, 9.18 grams TPW of methamphetamine, cigarette, and four lighters. The packages were ultimately submitted into evidence. All suspects were transported to the North District substations. Interviews Detective Frangi conducted an audio recorded statement with Wiggins. Wiggins was read her Miranda warnings and agreed to speak with Detective Frangi. The following is not verbatim and has been paraphrased. Wiggins advised she was at her home and left in the blue Audi with DeWitt as the driver. Wiggins explained that DeWitt drove because she did not want to make the drop. Wiggins and DeWitt then drove to racetrack to meet with Paul and Del Toro. Paul and Del Toro entered the vehicle and DeWitt drove them to 2115 MLK Boulevard, Fort Myers. Del Toro exited the vehicle to make the drop and they circled the area. Walkie-talkies were utilized during the drop. Del Toro called them on the radio when he was ready to be picked up. DeWitt then drove with the occupants and picked Del Toro up. They then drove back to the racetrack. Wiggins stated there was methamphetamine, cigarettes, and a lighter in the drop. Wiggins explained drops have occurred for over a month. Red typically brings the narcotics with him for the drops. Wiggins advised she knows Del Toro as Red. Detective Frangi conducted an audio recorded statement with Paul. Paul was read her Miranda warning and agreed to speak with Detective Frangi. The following is not verbatim and has been paraphrased. Paul stated she is Del Toro's girlfriend. Paul advised she did not know what Del Toro was going to do and that Del Toro was going to explain after the drop was conducted. Paul was told by Del Toro that he was given methamphetamine in exchange for making a run. Paul did not have any further information about the drop. DeWitt explained he was at the house and drove Wiggins to meet with Del Toro and Paul. DeWitt explained he drove for Wiggins because she was tired. DeWitt did not know who Del Toro or Paul was, but me them at the racetrack. He then drove them to 2115 MLK Boulevard, Fort Myers. DeWitt eventually stopped in front of the courthouse and Del Toro exited the vehicle with a walkie-talkie. DeWitt circled the area and Del Toro called out on the radio to be picked up. DeWitt stated he did not utilize the walkie-talkie and was doing what he was told to by Wiggins. DeWitt advised he was not given anything to drive the vehicle. DeWitt explained he did not know what was going on. Detective Frangi attempted to conduct an interview with Del Toro, Wilson, Hitchman, and Mulcahy worked together to have narcotics delivered to the Lee County Jail located at 2115 Melkay Boulevard. Detective Frangi finds probable cause them each with conspiracy to traffic in controlled substance and trafficking in methamphetamine due to TNT Detective Ocasio locating 1.2 grams TPW methamphetamine inside of Del Toro's green book bag. Detective Frangi finds probable cause and trafficking in methamphetamine due to TNT Detective Ocasio locating 9.2 grams TPW methamphetamine and 11 strips of buprenorphine and naloxone, sublingual film 8MG2MG in the gray bags that were found on the front passenger floorboard and under the front passenger seat where Wiggins was sitting. Detective Frangi finds probable cause to charge Wiggins with trafficking in a fentanyl possession of a controlled substance. Two counts. Thanks for watching this video. Please check out my playlist for more commentary, reaction, and updates on Wade Wilson. And don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and comment below.